Okay, I've been doing cold air intakes for most of my life, decades. But yet, my daily driver, this 03 Merck Marauder, has a stock air intake, but I supercharged it and intercooled it. How much is the stock intake robbing us? We just put on our new density setup where we measure humidity, temperature, pressure through the whole sy system to see what cuts air density and what adds to air density. Superchargers, turbochargers, and intercoolers are density machines. They make more power. They're power adders. Everything else subtracts power. Today I'm looking at what is, is this stock air intake costing me in terms of power potential? How much harder am I working the blower to get the desired effect? So we've got an air mouse ambient sensor behind the grill. We've got pressure and temperature right here in front of the throttle. In fact, I have four pressure sensors here and four temperature sensors, plus the air mouse, which is another pressure, temperature, and humidity sensor. All this stuff inside is running through uh, our Banks bus modules, so we're gathering all the data and running it into the iDash. So let's get inside and see what we're losing. Well, I think I'm in for some bad news here. Horsepower has to do with mixing pounds of air with pounds of fuel, air-fuel ratio. To make horsepower, you've got to have the air. So but my whole career has been a, about life after wide open the throttle. I went to the dry lakes. I had my Hillborn injectors on my small block Chevy. I stood the butterflies on end. It didn't go as fast as I wanted it to go. So I came home and I started learning about turbocharging. We're clear back in the 60s. From then on, it's how much air can I put in each cubic foot being pumped by the engine. That's the key. Where does it start? Well, it starts with nature, with mother nature. It starts with the ambient air. That's your potential that she gives you. I li like to look at how much air mass, how many pounds of air do I have in a thousand cubic feet? A lot of the engines I've built through, through the years inhale at least a thousand cubic feet per minute and maybe 2,000 or 3,000 or even 4,000 cubic feet of air per minute. In the case of street engines, if, if you're around 1,000 cubic feet of air per minute on a standard day, you have 72 pounds of air per 1,000 cubic feet. What does that mean to you? Well, if you're a diesel, diesel guy and you're running a clean air fuel ratio, that means 600 horsepower, 1,000 cubic feet 72 pounds, that gives you 600 horsepower. In a gasoline engine, that gives you 720 horsepower. We're in a gasoline vehicle right now. It's my 03 Merck Marauder. And I put a new application, a new page on the face of my little eye dash here. And what I'm measuring, and if you Bring the camera around and let me show you what I'm measuring. Ambient air density, this is a percentage number, 104%. On a standard day, as I said earlier, you'd have about 72 pounds. Right now, we've got 75 pounds, or, or enough to make 751 horsepower out of the ambient, 1,000 cubic feet of the ambient air. But after the air intake system, where it's got a pressure drop and a temperature gain, I'm down to 94.6%. I've lost 
almost 10% of the air density and 10% of the horsepower potential. I am crippling myself and I'm in the air intake business for God's sakes. I'm like the cobbler with the worn out shoes. I don't work on my own stuff enough. And this is, I am now, I'm telling you, this is shocking. So I'm gonna run this up and what'll, hap what'll happen is once the cool air starts coming through the system, the air, the air outside right now is 61 degrees, the air at the throttle is 104, and I've got quite a drop in air density. Well, I'm going to bring it up to 70 miles an hour, maybe 200 horsepower. If, if I try to really whack this thing, this blown 4.6 blows the tires away on this dyno. So I'm just going to bring it up and let you have a look at it. Can you turn on the cooling fans for the uh, nose air and for the uh, tire cooling, please? Okay, we're at 70 miles an hour, about 130 horsepower. Can you see that's temperature's cooling down and the density is coming up at the throttle. I'm going to take it to a couple hundred there, what, 200 horsepower. I'm still losing almost 50 horsepower in potential through the air filtration. Got 104% ambient air density, 98% at the throttle under the hood after it's been through the air intake system. So there you see it. There's the horsepower loss. Here's the pressure loss, about four tenths of a pound from ambient to the throttle, and the temperature gain is about 17 degrees. What, what I wanted you to see is where we start in most cases when we're doing a cold air induction system. You can't read this on a flow bench. This is how I've been doing it for 50 some years. And this is why our cold air intakes kick ass on everybody in the marketplace. Because we do it with air density, not just a flow bench. We do it in the vehicle with the hood down. So the temperature under the hood is honest. You can have this in your own vehicle. You can develop your own stuff. Here we're just doing the cold air intake. So the I-Dash is more than an oil pressure gauge or a water temp gauge or a boost gauge or a, ther or a thermal couple EGG. It's every gauge you've ever seen in your life. And then it's a whole bunch of additional gauges you've never heard of and never experienced. And I guarantee you, this is one of them. Hey guys, we gotta get rid of this stock intake, it sucks! <laughs>